There are 8 million YouTube talks online. But if you like, you want to really experience it, you have to come in person. It's great. I mean, you'll just meet such cool people. Hi, my name is Connor Spilsbury. I'm a senior software engineer at Bloomberg. And my team is responsible for a stateful distributed system in which at the moment our primary focus is that as we scale out the system to onboard more clients and more volume that they bring, that we maintain a high level of throughput and reliability. So in order to do that, we have real-time metrics measuring our system's health and performance that we constantly monitor. For example, this here is a graph of a wall time for a message that our system receives how long it takes to process it. This is normally distributed, it's around 20 microseconds, it's a small variance, but it's generally quite tight. Um, as we increase the system's volume, we want board new clients, we want to keep it like this. This is, this is a nice graph, I, I like this graph. I don't like this graph. <laughs> that graph and all those points are around 20 microseconds from before, those are all squashed all the way down here at the bottom. Instead, we've got this whole axis resized to fit in, in all of these additional points. We've got these points that are up in the stratosphere, far away from all of the others. This is terrible. We need to understand this. But what's worse is that this is all we have. We don't have anything more granular to understand the problem than this graph. So there's only one thing for us to do. Add print statements. <laughs> well, more specifically, the operation here that we're doing is we're inserting new objects into one of our containers during the processing of the message itself. We can add more timers to the pertinent function calls in our application, and maybe more logging about the sizes and shapes of the containers that we're operating on. And so using that new logging and metrics, I can now get a graph that looks a bit like this. So those red points are the size of the container at which the message processing was slow, and the others being from our happy graph from before. And there does seem to be a bit of a trend line here. Something is getting exponentially slower, um, but maybe for only occasional values. And we kept on seeing these same values. It was, it was repeatable. And so I pulled these values into a table. My background's in mathematics, I studied maths. And so the mathematician in me is very curious. Whenever I start seeing numbers, I'm always thinking, okay, what could be the significance of these? Where are these coming from in our system? So shout out if you recognize anything that might be special about these these figures. I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> a little bit further than that. Prime, I heard it, there we are. They're prime numbers. Fantastic. So where else might we see prime numbers commonly in software? I, th I, heard, I heard the answer down here, exactly, yes. Something around containers, hashing, in particular, bucket sizes. And so after a little bit of grepping for our source code and our dependencies, I found those exact same values in a boost multi-index container which we use. Um, so virtual index, multi-index is an unordered node-based container which you can have multiple keys. Um, and the primes are the bucket sizes in this container. So, for example, the way this works is that once we've added enough elements to fill our bucket of size, say, 389, the container will go and allocate a new bucket of the next size in a sequence, 769 in this case, and rehash every element over to new locations in that new bucket. And this list from Boost matches exactly those figures that we were seeing from the logging that we added in. Interestingly, it turns out that these Primes used to be the exact same sequence that Libster C++ implementation used for stood unordered map in like the 90s and early 2000s, but Libster C++ changed it at some point in the mid 2000s. I'm not too sure why, but if anyone knows, I've been purist. Mostly these days, it's powers of two. Um, but if you're still not convinced that this rehashing and the resizing is what was causing the slowness, I also profiled this in Perth. And hiding all the way at the bottom of this enormously long and also truncated, by the way. Uh, a templated function for our boost multi-index is our smoking gun. Right down here, in the call to rehash. And so this is obviously a very condensed version of the journey that we took to find out what was wrong. I went through this in maybe three minutes. In reality, we're talking days of engineering time spent here. So in retrospect, we didn't have the granularity we needed in our system. 
It's perhaps something that we don't think about when things are going well. But when things do come up, when we go from that nice, well-behaved, happy graph to one that is having a tantrum, how easily are you able to go from a macro view to a micro view and understand your problem? Thank you.